For some reason, the song Hotel California pops into my head, specifically the part where it says, my head grew heavy and my sight grew dim. I don't need to fall asleep at the wheel right now. I know I need to wake up. In my head, I'm going over my gear list again. I don't want to forget anything important. Coffee, check. Camera, check. Batteries, check. Lenses, check. Memory cards, check. Tripod, check. The nice thing about being on the road so early is that there's not much traffic at 3 a.m. The Oregon coast is a couple hours from my house and I want to be there by sunrise. Someone recently told me that there were pelicans feeding at the coast and I'm looking forward to getting a few photographs. There's something about the smell and the sounds of the ocean, not to mention the amazing views that keep me going back. Deer are active this time of morning in September, so I'm vigilant on my drive, keeping an eye out for anything that might run out in front of me. The road is very windy and I'm enjoying the drive, even in my Jeep Wrangler. Arriving just before sunrise, I could tell it was going to be a beautiful day. As I walked towards the bay, the familiar smell of salt filled my nose. I could already hear the seagulls squawking and other birds starting their day. I don't see many clouds in the sky, but I'm going to make the most of it. To some people, that statement wouldn't make sense, as they assume bright sunlight is always best for bird and wildlife photography. The truth is, direct sunlight can create harsh shadows and rob images of what might have been rich colors. I prefer to photograph with a slight overcast when possible. I see that the tide is out, exposing the rocky bottom of the bay. I hope when the water comes back in, it brings plenty of fish and crab for the birds to feed on. There is nobody here right now except me. The sky is beginning to brighten and I can see some color appearing on the horizon. I scan the area, taking in all the beauty and looking for a place to set up my tripod. I see an area down by the rocks near the sandy shore. As I make my way down, I see something flying in the distance low by the water. Could it be a pelican? No, not this time, it's a seagull. I adjust my camera shutter speed to 1 1250th of a second. That's the slowest I normally do for a flying bird. In this low light situation, I set the ISO at 2500. I set the aperture to f4 to let the most light in on the 500 millimeter cannon. I peer through the viewfinder and slowly track the goal and gently press the shutter button. Shooting in electronic shutter mode, the R5 is silent, but I know after just a couple seconds, I've captured plenty of images to choose from. More of the usual suspects arrive. This young seagull is looking for a meal among the rocks. Nearby, a curious seal makes an appearance, likely waiting for more food to come back in with the tide. Off in the distance, I see another bird. It's large and graceful. It's flying in front of the mountain, so it's hard to see. As it gets closer, I realize it's a brown pelican. The brown pelican is simply an awesome bird. Their wingspan can reach seven feet, and they can weigh as much as seven pounds. They are the only bird that can dive for more than 30 feet to capture their food. They have an extendable sack of skin at the base of their throat that can hold three gallons of water. My favorite thing about them is that they simply look prehistoric like the great blue heron does. Two more pelicans appear. The colorful sky creates a beautiful silhouette. As they circle around, it becomes apparent they are looking for something. Were they looking for a place to land? Did they see another pelican? Or are they looking for breakfast? As they gracefully fly by again, something catches the attention of one of the birds. He drops his wings to activate his air brakes. Quickly after, a second pelican does the same. He tilts to one side and begins a quick descent towards the water. Just before impact, he tucks his wings. They take a moment to consume their catch.
The color in the sky begins to disappear as the sun makes its way above the horizon. I can see the water slowly inching its way towards the feet of my tripod as the tide begins to change. I take in my surroundings and feel grateful. The sky is brighter now and I'm ready to take some pictures. After scanning the sky, I decide to check my exposure on a seagull on the shore. Hey there, seagull. How you doing? I'm making a video here. Could you do something exciting? Oh, wait. Wait, what's that look? I know that look. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Ah, no, no. Cut, cut, cut. Rewind, rewind. I told you not to do it. Sorry about that, everyone. While you guys watch these two seagulls fight over crab brains, I'm going to share my thoughts about photographing seagulls and how it relates to photographing pelicans and other birds. Why photograph seagulls, you ask? Many people think that since seagulls are not some rare exotic bird, why waste your time photographing them? Well, I think there's a few good reasons. I like to have a way to ensure that my current camera settings are going to provide the correct exposure. It can be really easy to overexpose a white bird with a dark background, especially in direct sunlight. On days like today when I'm targeting pelicans with white heads, it's important that the exposure is correct. There's nothing worse than taking a bunch of photos only to find out that all the details on the white feathers are lost because the image was overexposed. Most modern cameras have tools to help us, such as exposure compensation when using auto ISO. Some cameras have blinkies that show the overexposed parts of an image. If I'm shooting in manual mode, I simply underexpose by a stop or two depending on the situation. In either case, one of the most beneficial things I've found is to take a couple test shots and review them to ensure the camera is set up properly. Another reason to photograph seagulls is because they fly a lot. We all want to take better in-flight shots. Seagulls are great for practicing in-flight photography and honing your skills. Photographing seagulls can also help you learn how to control the depth of field. Just because you have a fancy f4 telephoto lens doesn't mean that you should shoot wide open at f4 all the time. If you do, then there's going to be times when only part of the subject is in focus. Seagulls give me a chance in real life to get to know my camera gear and how much stopping down or closing down the aperture affects the depth of field in the given situation. Also, PhotoPills has a great app that helps quickly and easily calculate the depth of field based on focal length, aperture, and the distance to the subject. The pelicans gracefully fly overhead as I capture a few more images. I gently press the shutter button, but I know these are not the images I'm after today. Like many people, I'm looking to improve my photography. I told myself a while back that I wasn't going to take any images of birds flying in the sky with a boring blue background, unless there's a compelling reason. Now don't get me wrong, if two falcons are making a food exchange in the air, or two bald eagles are fighting, or an osprey flies by with a fish, I'm going to gladly take the images and tolerate the blue background. When I'm photographing any wildlife, one of my biggest considerations is what's in the background and how far the background is away from the subject. Of course, there's always exceptions to the rules. With this pelican image, it's one of the few images where I entirely filled the frame with the bird with zero cropping. As you can see when you zoom in, there's a lot of detail to be seen, and I love detail. I really wanted to catch some images of the pelicans diving into the water. I decided to make the short journey to the other side of the bay. I'm pleasantly surprised to see a couple pelicans perched on top of some pilings. I slowly make my way just a little closer to record some video and take some pictures. 
Looking through the viewfinder, it seems like I'm within feet of the beautiful birds. In reality, the birds are very comfortable in my presence because I'm at a safe distance. They go about preening while I capture a multitude of pictures. I keep the shutter speed high because even though the birds are perched, I want to freeze the action of the beak. I'm also concerned that if one decides to fly, I'm going to miss the flight shot. There are a few pelicans swimming around. I see a pattern develop where they take off from the water, circle in the sky until they see a fish, then dive at full speed into the water. I'm determined to get some diving shots, so I set my shutter speed at 1 hundredth of a second. I set the aperture f6.3 so there's a reasonably large enough depth of field to get the entire bird in focus. With plenty of light, I'm able to keep the ISO locked in at 400. I take a few practice shots and double check my exposure. I see one of the pelicans circling back around in the air. His head is pointed down at the water looking for his next meal. I see him drop his shoulder and I know it's time. The dive is so fast I'm not sure I'm able to keep the giant bird in the frame. After the dive is over I quickly press the play button to review my images. I can't believe what I'm seeing. The focus is locked onto the bird through the entire sequence and the bird never went out of the frame. I continue to take several more flight and diving shots with mixed results. I'm fighting the harsh light and the heat haze for every minute I can. The sun is directly overhead now and I know it's time to go. There are a few other images I'd like to share from today. I hope you enjoyed sharing this adventure with me. Feel free to follow me on Instagram at Dell Luce Photography. Until next time.